Welcome to this Operations Bridge video tutorial. In this video, you will learn how to use the event repository of the Operations Bridge Manager event browser. The term event repository for the closed event browser was introduced with Operations Bridge 2005. There are four use cases for opening the event repository. The first use case relates to a situation in which an event was closed prematurely. In this case, it needs to be reopened again. In the second use case, you want to check if a similar event occurred before, how often it occurred and at what time and date. And this might be useful information for solving the problem. The third use case is an enhancement of the second use case. Here you want to search for a solution of a similar event which can be applied to the active event as well. In the fourth use case, you want to look at active events and recently closed events together, and the recent past might help you to understand the current problem. For demonstrating the event repository use cases, the working environment of operator Peter will be used. For his work, he uses the page operator console, which contains the central component, the event browser. Currently, the active event browser is selected. Starting with Operations Bridge Manager 2025, the Active Event Browser and the Event Repository are implemented as two modes of the same kind of browser. Let us assume you are taking Peter's role as operator. In the first use case, you notice that you have just recently closed an event accidentally, which you need to reopen again. You use the respective View Filter and CI Filter in the Active Event Browser to narrow the problem area down. Then you switch to the event repository. The filters stay persistent when switching from the active event browser to the event repository or vice versa. In the event repository, the time range filters added automatically. You change from the default selection received to closed and choose last one hour as time range, as you know for sure that you have closed this event in the last 60 minutes. You do not select any other option in this menu and click the Apply button to enable the filter. Note that the event repository filter changes need to be applied explicitly using the Apply button to avoid costly database operations while changing a filter. You change the lifecycle status of the filtered event back to Open and switch to the Active Event Browser to continue working on the event. In the second use case, you are working on a problem for which you want to check if it already happened before. If yes, how often did it occur and can a time pattern be derived? The problem you are working on is related to the high number of the PostgreSQL logs count. You have used the respective view filter and the search filter logs to identify the event. You switch to the event repository, keep closed as selected in the previous use case and choose unlimited as time range as you want to list all closed events related to this filter. Finally, you select the apply button. The information in the lower left shows that zero events out of 246 events are displayed. Why does it say 246? We will come back to that later. The limit of 200 displayed events is the default when switching to the event repository. The number can be changed to 1000, 5000 and at maximum 10,000 events. Note the warning that is displayed. Hover over it to see this helpful tooltip. It reads, Limit has been reached. There are more events available on the server that have not been loaded. Please refine your filters or increase the limit. So increase the limit to 1000 events. Now 5 events are shown which match the filters and the warning has disappeared. Now let me explain that behavior and what the 246 events refer to. All filters except for the text search filter are executed on the database level. Matching events are sent to the event browser up to the number that you selected as maximum number of events. Maximum is 10,000. 
In our case, there are 246 events, but there was no event among the latest 200 events, which matched the text search logs. Therefore, we did not see any event at the beginning. After changing the maximum number of displayed events to 1000, five events met the text search, because they are part of the time range between the 201st and the 246th event. 10,000 events can be displayed in the event repository as seen before. If more events are matching these filters, the latest 10,000 events are displayed. To avoid any wrong conclusion, it is recommended to adjust the filters executed on the database level to limit the number of resulting events maximum to 10,000. A helpful tool for this is to choose a custom time range to search in a time span between two days to be defined. This way you can investigate the events in chunks, keeping the total number of filtered events below 10,000. The third use case is an enhancement of the second use case. In addition to the steps done in the second use case, you also investigate the solution being applied for the related closed event. You're looking for a solution for the exceeding PostgreSQL block reads count. Switch to the event repository, keep the unlimited time range, and select max 1000 events to display all events of the 246 events which match the search filter blocks. Eight events match the filters. In the column solution, you identify the event containing a solution. In the first use case, you want to look at active and recently closed events to analyze what was going on in the recent past. You switch to the event repository. Select the last three days as time range as you want to see recently closed events. To also see active events together with closed events, select Received to activate the option Include Active Events. Click the respective checkbox. Also click the checkbox Refresh Automatically if you want to know about the active events received after you switch to the event repository. As automatic refresh interval set 15 minutes. Use smaller intervals only when needed. You can always click the Refresh button for a manual refresh. Finally, click the Apply button. The result is a list of closed and active events that you can use for further analysis. To learn more about the different features of the Operations Bridge Manager 2020-05 event browser, please see the Operations Bridge Manager online help and further video tutorials.